Welcome, 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 one and all, anyone listening, you have just tuned in to Just Talking, a podcast where me and a colleague express our opinions on any and all things entertainment, whether it be movies, television, video games, books, comic books, toys, music, anything that comes to mind that is relevant at the time, we're going to tell you about it. Featuring myself, Christopher Shu, alongside, as always, my co-host, Kenneth Eaton. So guys, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. So without further ado, let's start the show. Hello, 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 and welcome back. This is another episode, uh, episode three of the podcast. We're back for another one. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's... Um, Let's run down some topics of the week here. What we're going to be talking about is the new Jungle Book movie that just came out. The new live action Jungle Book movie that we watched today. uh, Directed by John Favreau. Uh, The guy directed Iron Man, Iron Man 2, and uh, Zathora. And uh, he did a great little independent movie called uh, Chef, which is a really great movie. Anyways, this is his next big outing for Disney. Uh, did we like it? Did we not like it? We're going to tell you about it. Also, we're going to run down some news. There's been a lot of news um, out there this week. There's been a lot of cool stuff. Captain America early screening. Is it good? Is it bad? We don't know. A lot of different trailers. Suicide Squad. Doctor Strange. Um, uh, and uh, maybe there's a new title for the Spider-Man movie. Standalone Sony slash Marvel MCU collaboration. Anyways, so, uh, so yeah, that's what's going to happen now. Uh How's everything going over there, Ken? It's going good. And going good. You excited about all this news? <laughs> some of it, yes. Yeah, some of it, no. <laughs> some of it, yes. Yeah, some of it, no. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you got you got enough of it to, to go around. But um, anyway, without further ado, let's let's stop uh, lollygagging here. Let's get straight to it. All right, we just got out of the uh, uh, of the screening of Jungle Book, the brand new Jungle Book I just mentioned. Um, you know, there's been a lot of buzz about this thing. There's been a lot of anticipation simply because, as they tell me, now, it can't be exactly because I, 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 as, as I was watching this, I was, I was conscious of it. But everything, they said everything but the boy is fake <laughs> in this movie. Um, when you, while you were watching it, did, I mean... That's pretty goddamn impressive. If everything but the boy was now, of course, I, uh, we know the 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 animals are because they talk and so forth, and everything looks great in the movie. But man, there's sometimes like when he's in the water and stuff like that's fake. I don't. Know, it, it it would be worth watching the behind the scenes because the the splashing water, the, anything that the boy did physical, I have a hard time believing. I have to believe they had some kind of a tank. Now I do believe them that they that everything was in um, all the landscapes. Yes. Well, I mean, well, I, well I, what I think is what I think screen. is true is everything is in blue screen. So like the rocks and all that kind of stuff, they just probably had some blue blue mats that were in the shape of rocks that he was sitting right. on. So I do believe that, but I mean, all but I think that whenever they goes and jumps in the water and stuff, they must have had like a little pool in the studio because I know that like Lord of the Rings, my, Peter Jackson started it with some of the Lord of the Rings stuff where like if you go back and watch those movies, uh, whenever they jump in the water, unless they're emerging us um, uh, out of the water. When they're in underneath it, it's all just them on like a wire, kind of miming the motion. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was kind of neat at the time, but when you watch it back, you can kind of see that. And that didn't look anything like that in any part. So I, I, so I have a feeling that... Um, anything anything natural was just to help the kid with his performance, I guess. Right, I, th- I think stuff like that. But I mean, I guess maybe I'm holding too true on their word. That, that uh, But that's what they said. On D3 last year, yeah. they said that everything... You should keep in mind, guys, everything but the boy is fake. So, I'm thinking that's everything, but it can't be. Nonetheless, oh, so, oh, well, for the, what, what, what did you think of the movie, outside of that? I mean, what, did you like it? Uh, was it good? Was it bad? Did you enjoy it? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll let you speak. Well, as a, as a preference first, uh, as a kid, I didn't watch uh, a lot of Disney movies over and over again. Uh, it's funny, my favorite Disney movie out of the whole bunch was probably one of the few Disney movies that flopped in the theater, and that was The Black Cauldron. Um... 
But as far as like Jungle Book going into this, I think I'd seen Jungle Book once, of course, and you Bear Necessities, the the famous song that you know came out of there. Uh, so much that I I think in one of our conversations that I was saying, oh, Bill Murray is. Uh, I thought King Louie was. Uh, I knew King Louie was Christopher Walken, but I thought like King Louie was blue. And I so so basically didn't have a frame of reference. Oh, really? But, wow. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, cool. we had that discussion. You're like, no, 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 no. You're like, Chris Walken's playing King Louie. It's not. But uh, here's here's my uh, opinion on it was, I tell you what, it, as a kid, if I saw this movie, it, I would be just ecstatic over it. I mean, it, it's, it's an amazing kid's film. Yes, there are some parts. If you have a kid that, that's... Uh, six or, or younger you might want to be aware because the the main villain the tiger in this is is pretty vicious um and there could be some scenes that might scare your kids but i highly recommend if you have you know if you want to take your kids to a movie you can't get any better with this and it's refreshing to see a family film that wasn't a pixar film that was good <laughs> um but yeah but uh i, I was going to ask you out of all the characters I'll go ahead and say mine. Uh, which was your favorite? Mine was actually, believe it or not, Scarlett Johansson as a the snake. There's a transition that they do for a flashback with her that, to me, was the best thing in the whole movie. I, I was like, wow, this is, especially with every being, everything being CGI, I was like, man, this is you know, really incredible. But uh, who, who was your favorite character, you say, in the movie? Uh, well... The Scarlett Johansson thing was really was cool. I agree that transition was really cool. Transitions into like a backstory. No, it wasn't enough. She wasn't on screen. That, that's pretty much. Um, once again, well, this this is not this is this is a spoiler free review. But you don't really this this one scene is all she's in there. So that wasn't enough for me to be. Even though that transition was good enough to be my favorite character, uh, I thought going into this thing that. <laughs> Christopher Walken was going to be my favorite character, no matter what, because he's King Moy and, uh, and whatever, whatever, and he's he's which is the monkey and the uh, whatever he is and the the, the the ape. I don't guess he's a monkey; he's an ape. Um, because just simply because it's Christopher Walken, I'll, I'll put a disclaimer as well that uh, which is pretty much on par with yours. I I did I did not watch a lot of Disney movies when I was a kid. I watched them like some of the classic ones uh, in the past, or at least once. And then um, you know some of them I watched over. Oddly enough, as I told you, like Robin Hood was one of them, which doesn't people don't talk about that one a lot. And Dumbo and things of that nature, because you know Dumbo's got this kind of um, uh, uh, staple to it now that uh, because of that trippy ass uh, elephants on parade thing, which. It's true, but I remember being tri- tripping my ass out when I was fucking nine on that shit way back in the day, and I, I don't know what that means for me, but I remember going like, this is scary, and this is crazy, this is weird. I like it. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, but uh, And as great as Christopher Walken was, he wasn't. Oddly enough, it's actually a surprise to me, because it, okay, I'll, I'll give you my answer. My, it, it was a surprise. Uh, Bill Murray's Baloo, actually, I think, was my favorite character, which is, yeah. is, which is I didn't think that would be... The case, because first off, Bill Murray, I thought when they when they when they uh, announced the casting of him as the voice, I thought that was weird because everybody knows, even if you don't know the movie like us, that Baloo's character has got this deep, gravelly voice and come on and you know and all this, and that's not Bill Murray at all, at all. So that kind of seemed weird, but I man, he was funny in it, and I haven't and and just for maybe for the simple fact that I laughed at Mr. Bill Murray. Uh, I haven't laughed at Mr. Bill Murray right. in such a long time. I don't care if it's just his voice, and I don't care if he's a CG bear or not. It was so fantastic to to laugh at him again because he's such a great comedian. But anyways, I really liked him. But with that said, though, I don't even think this is fair. I mean, I could say Sh- uh, Shere Khan, which is played by, would you say, Idris Elba? Idris Elba, yeah. Man, he is awesome. He is so cool. That 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 character... And here's how much I didn't know about it. I didn't. I knew. I knew the name. I knew the tiger. I knew who he was. But I couldn't remember if he, I didn't know he was the villain. That's <laughs> what so I couldn't remember. Matter of fact, I thought the panther was the villain. And he's I the, thought, he's the uh, one that, um, that that helps out Mowgli. This is how much research I did on the movie before we saw it. I thought the panther at first was Liam Neeson, and then I was like, wait a minute, this is Ray Fiennes. 
Yeah, it was Ray yeah. Fonz, right? I, I believe so. I, I'm I'm not for sure exactly. It sounded, but it at sounds some points he sounded like Liam Neeson. I just kept no. I knew when Liam. You can definitely tell Liam. I kept thinking I of Taken. It's like, oh, this Panther's got a particular set of skills. <laughs> no, but I but I really liked the blue and to go to uh, what you said real quick. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know what the rating. You know what the rating with this? It's it's, it's, it's PG. It, was it PG? Yeah. Uh, as far as that's concerned, um, you know, take heed. I guess, but there's nothing in here that's really. The way I see it is, if you can't take a child, I mean, listen, if it's if he's three, maybe not. I don't know, but if he's six or ten or something like that, I see no problem with taking your child to see this movie because, first off, it is a children's movie. They made it for children. It's PG, so it's appropriate for children. And plus, though there are some peril and some dread and some scary situations. Why do you want to hide your kid from that completely? <laughs> I mean, it's like, this is, I mean, if you can watch The Lion King, you can watch this. I mean, this is the, you know, the, the, the law of the land, law of the jungle. I mean, hell, I guess make sure you don't flip it on, you know, Discovery Channel where they got a real lion eating a gazelle somewhere, then I guess you're screwed. But, uh, well, we watched a lot worse when we were kids and we turned out for, yeah, for good for the most but, part. But I mean, I don't, but, but uh, even, I mean, we watched, yeah, we watched some bad things we probably shouldn't have watched, but I'm glad we did. But I think this thing is perfectly fine for children. And, you know, not infants for children. It's very, it's very, very good for children. Uh, but as far as what I thought, I thought, man, I thought this was. I know there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of good buzz coming. I mean, all a lot, a lot of critics are really up its tail about it and really happy about it and really praising this thing. And you know that that can go either way. Who knows how that goes until you see it for yourself. And I saw it, and, man. I really enjoyed. It. I really did not know. I was like. This is, to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I wouldn't have seen this thing in the theater if it wasn't for this podcast. Uh, if it wasn't for this to kind of, you know, give you guys some kind of an insight on it. And and, and with that said as well, there are going to be some weeks that there's something that's probably not, we're not going to, you know, it may be a little bit, you know, too over, uh, uh, overbearing. I don't know. It's just a little bit too much for, for us to watch. And then we'll tell you that we'll have, we'll have stuff to fill up that that time uh, with whether it be news or something like that. But I, I don't mean, mean to interrupt, but we were <laughs> we're wrong on the Panther. It was Ben Kingsley okay. was the voice. Yeah, well, the that, that, I, so. I didn't know at all. So yeah, actually, so. when you're saying that, I can hear it now. I, yeah. So. And uh, then there's a lo- there's a a porcupine in the movie. Oh, that was Gary. I know that, that was Gary was, Shandling. The, yeah. the late Gary Shandling. So Rest that was pretty peace. cool. Yeah. Rest in peace, Gary. Yeah. And he's in there because he was in Iron Man too. Yeah. Right. So, right. I mean, Favreau. Cool. Yeah. Well well, 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 why do you think Ben Kingsley was in there? Oh, that's right. Now he now he was in three, but uh, I don't know. Maybe Favreau still produced Iron Man three. So, anyways, uh, I thought it was a good. I thought it was a damn good movie. I mean, I came into it like we mentioned, really almost blank outside of the normal stuff. Uh, that you just you just automatically know through time about the you know the the, the movie the classic animation. So, but I was a little bit kind of just on level ground, and I just watched it as a movie. And I tell you, I really liked what they did with like creating the lore. Uh, uh, without yeah, like so maybe this was in the Rudyard Kipling novel. I don't know. Uh, I would say probably because I'm sure the Disney animation movie probably didn't take all this kind of stuff. But I really enjoyed like the the journey, the idea, and like and, and the world of the of the characters. I thought they built pretty well, especially for a movie like this. Like what comes to mind specifically is the elephants. I I, I can tell you, like I said, I watched it maybe once or twice, the original one. I don't remember them ever referring and having because I mean the the rest of the jungle creatures who like have nothing but utmost respect for the elephants of the of the jungle because apparently they created i mean because they're so old they're almost you know you know they're, they're, they're so old that they they claim at least in this movie that they helped build the forest they're the ones with their tusks were knocking trees down and they did things knocked rocks around and all this kind of stuff and i just and so like anytime they would come around like all the creatures and they would make Mowgli bow and stuff like that and i thought man that's I don't remember that. Maybe like, maybe, yeah. that, maybe that's in the original. I don't know, but I don't remember that. And I just thought just adding all that story and all that kind of stuff was 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 really cool. And I don't remember. And I don't want. And I, I said I don't want to get too much into it. But Mowgli has some human traits. I mean, he's you know he was you know um, um, adopted by the wolves. I, I do kind of remember that. Uh, but in this movie, they and I don't I, I don't think they did that in the original. But he 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 he's got some human traits that he does that help. 
uh, uh, kind of segregate him out from because he is a human. And I thought that was really cool that they ex- they, they, they expressed and they uh, expanded on that. Uh, yeah, and I, like I said, I don't remember that. So so I guess my my my, my uh, view is I just was really shocked by it. I really thought they made a, a, a really good movie. I think they made a really a really good movie. And uh, I think I, I think it deserves at least some of the praise that, that it's been given because I mean I think yeah, they they they, they dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's on this thing and um, you know, outside of the fact it may not be something for you. Like I said, we may not have seen this if it wasn't for this podcast. I would have seen it eventually, but I may not have seen the, in, in theaters. So if it's not for you, that's just the way it goes. But when you're looking at it as a movie, man, I think they did a god darn good job, man. What do you think? They, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff in here. Like they they make a reference to a, a red flower. Oh yeah, uh, See, I don't remember that in the original. I, I mean, there, I there's a lot of there's a lot of things that they don't. Uh, they they kind of you know give you a hint of what they're talking about, but they don't you know reveal it until later. Um, yeah, the the elephants being a godlike uh, animal in the jungle was was pretty cool. Uh, my my one issue, and it's, I'm probably just thinking too much because it's a kid movie, but you know he's taken in by the wolves at a young age. And he knows how to speak English, and I was like, "Okay, how did you know?" Like, like I said, well, kid you, movie, you don't think too much. But then again, all the animals are talking in English. That's so what I was about know. to say. That, that um, that's something you can't deal with. If, you, if if that's a problem for you, then don't go watch this because yeah, yeah the, the animals talk. When do the animals talk? There's also some points in the movie where there are some animals that don't talk. Here's something like though for me, and like I said, I didn't see it as a problem because I, once again, like I talked about last week, I understand the movie that you're seeing. For me, more so on the point that you're trying to make, or you are making, is that Shere Khan hates Mowgli so much. And as you get to the end of the movie, you kind of go, at least I was thinking, are you, do you really want to go this far to kill this child? Yeah. Really? Is it worth that much? Is it really? Can you not stop back and go, you know what? All right. I, I concede. But no, but but but, when, but, but well, if you think rationally, movies aren't really meant to think rationally because otherwise, uh, it's not a movie. It's not a good narrative because we live in a rational world, and sometimes my daily life isn't interesting. So if they were to do that, then you wouldn't really have a strong villain, or you wouldn't have you know. Uh, um, well, there's a good uh, third act. Like I said, there to me there was the hidden messages, and that's one of them. As I thought too, I was like, okay, they they explain what you know what his agenda is but i also looked at it like uh, there were certain moments in the movie where everybody feared him so i kept thinking his revenge or well not it, it wasn't really revenge based but it was more like okay here's man here's animals and as we know humans are are pretty much you know top of the 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 ruling the earth pretty much over animals animals are are you know subsidiant to us um so the way i looked at it was he was the king of the jungle everybody was scared of him if he lets the kid live and lets him become into a man well now he's got somebody that could overcome him and he's no longer king so that's kind of they didn't really go that route with him but that's how i took it Right. And that was things about the movie that I liked. That it wasn't just it was like you kind of form your own opinion about certain things. Like I said, they just weren't straightforward with it. It was kind of you know sprinkled here and there. So was, uh, that that was one of the strong points of the movie for me. Well, that well that's one of the things also that that I think is a plus to the story and the world that they built. Because not only I mean, Shere Khan was the um, he's the king of the jungle or what have you, but there's also because the jungle is a vast place and there are different territories and regions of it. And then you go to where the and deep in the forest where the monkeys are and you got. Um, King Louis, who has his point of view, and he wants power, and he wants to, um, you know, he's got an agenda to be like, I want to ultimately, I mean, it sounds like Hitler actually wants to say, he ultimately wants to have reign over all of the jungle. He knows that Shere Khan owns the the uh, Serengeti part, the the, the, the flat plains yeah. and stuff like that. He's over here in the jungle, and he's got his own set of power. But he wants it all because there's something he wants from Mowgli. And um, so once again, that just proves, I'm like, man, they really did do a good job. And I want to say some speaking of that. 
I just noticed that. I noticed that in the. Well, two things I want to bring up. One is the music. The music was done by John Debney, which um, I know uh, Favreau worked with on one of the Iron Man movies. I couldn't remember what one it is, and I'm not doing my research right, but uh, it was one of the two. And um, he brought him with this, and I want to say because I'm a real, I'm a real score kind of guy, I'm a real um, orchestral kind of music uh, guy for my movies. And uh, there's been kind of a lull in and in, in, in not not music, uh, not orchestral music in movies as a whole, but just really like they they just set the tone. They go, okay, here we go. Uh, and there might be some hate coming here, but for instance, the greatest example, and I don't necessarily think he's a bad uh, composer, but um, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer with the Batman. I'll, the Dark Knight Rises or the Dark Knight series is a fantastic series. All he did in those movies was set the tone. That's all he did. You know, when, especially when you go back and you look at what Danny Elfman did, and it was bright, and it was big, and it was boisterous, and it was fun. And it was Batman is coming, and then you go to just very subtle. <laughs> yeah, very subtle. You're like, okay, but this thing. John Debney, man, hats off to you, because I was telling him, I don't know how many times I'm going to watch this movie, but there are children that probably will, and there's other people that probably will, and this is definitely one where I can't hum a bar for you right now that was in it, but just like RoboCop or Ghostbusters or Star Wars or whatever it is that we were, we watched when we were kids that had great scores, you know, great scores all into you know you don't normally get it on the first run. It takes a couple runs. Great scores maybe only takes two or three runs of watching a movie, and you go, oh, okay, I know that's that's Star Wars. I know that's RoboCop or whatever. I feel the same. Finally, in a long time, in my opinion, this is a movie that if somebody watched this multiple times, you would appreciate and probably hum bars and tunes of this score. Uh, so, you know, hats off to that. And secondly, which was just uh, just off the cuff right here, uh, because I didn't know this initially. There's a. It was written by a man named Justin Marks, which I'm so happy. And looks, I'm look. This thing's Disney. It's John Favreau's Jungle Book. This thing's gonna make money. Okay, it's gonna make money. And I'm anyway. So with that said, he's associated with this, and I am so happy that he's associated. And if you haven't heard of him, it's probably because you know he, uh, you haven't heard of him because he's. Almost been ostracized in, 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 in Hollywood because he wrote some scripts that I believe got got fucked up, got 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 twisted and rewritten in Hollywood's and the producers got and anyways, got got all mingled in there and we know that they can do that. Um, but he wrote Oh man, he wrote first off uh, that uh, Street Fighter Legends of Chun Li. Oh man, how horrible that and, is! But when you watch that movie, you go, "I see what he was trying to do." It was a little. It was. It, was, it came out in two thousand nine, which is the same year that uh, Iron Man came out, and he had the same idea as what Marvel wound up doing. Is I'm going to build this character. I'm going to start with Chun Li because even at the end of the movie, they're like, "All right, we're going to look at this Ray, Ryu character. We're going to look into him." And then you would go to the next one and build up, and then build up to a couple movies, and then just like they did with the Avengers, they would build up to literally the street fighter tournament so i gotta understood what he was doing but dude came in the guy that directed it and i think he put his stupid paws in it and he fucked it all up and he and then i think because nobody really cared about the franchise it, it, oh, it's, it's our buddy that we talked about uh, last week and as bartakawa <laughs> did doom yeah. it did doom and all that stuff and i think they came in i think they knew that there was probably gonna be a flop and nobody really cared nobody's gonna fight for it and, they, and the producers put their hands in it and they hired a bunch of stupid assholes uh i like chris klein but my god you want to see one of the worst performances ever in history watch this movie and watch chris klein in it he's a ham sandwich um but uh but anyway he wrote that and he wrote um i'm looking at his stuff here um just oh man it's 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 not a lot. It's funny because he did a movie called Fast Forward, which is short. A couple shorts. He, okay, his first thing that he got done was uh, was the Street Fighter, and then he did a TV movie, and then he did the Jungle Book. So that's how ostracized he got. And then well, now, and then now he looks like he's announced for Top Gun Two, uh, Sh- Shadow. Oh my God, Shadow of the Colossus. Is yeah, that based Shadow off the, video? the Colossus? Jungle Book Two, uh, some kind of Federal Bureau of Physics and the counterparts TV thing. Nonetheless, uh, he was also, and, and it's not on here because it never came to be. Because I think after the Street Fighter thing happened 
they shut him down. But he also wrote a Voltron script and a Masters of the Universe script, which I mean, I read online. People had it had leaked, and people had read it, and they said it was fan. Fantastic! It was absolutely fantastic, and I know that they're talking about and they're in the works on doing a, um, a Masters of the Universe movie now. And I think that they said they're taking pieces of it, of, of what he had in there. I'm not for sure on that, but anyways, my point is, congratulations, Justin. I think you're a good writer. I I, I like where you were coming from, and I think you just unfortunately got in a situation where somebody just mingled with your stuff and if not then you just then you know then then you really you did a shitty job on on street fighter but but, but what, I, but what I, you I, didn't uh, do is hire the actors the shitty actors to play in, in in that so that's that's out of your control anyway what what i think is cool about this though is is you know he got this opportunity in the jungle book so if you ask me i think it was mingling in the street fighter movie because if that's the case in this jungle book screenplay wouldn't have been good right that's so, what i mean sure but uh, just to add one mention, one of the titles you didn't mention that he's writing. All of you fan, all of you fans of the survival horror game Dead Space, he is writing that as well. I don't see that on here. Yeah, it's on uh, on this. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but and they announced this the the day before Jungle Book came out. They're already in uh, development of Jungle Book Two. Well, I mentioned so that one. You did I'm mention that I'm one. on IMDb right now. I'm looking at this. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't see. But yeah, the, that's Dead I, I see Dead Space here as well. So that's pretty. I don't cool. know. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Uh, so congratulations to you. So, anyways, let's uh, let's 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 kill this um, this review with a re- with a score. What do you want? To, what do you want to score? The Jungle Book. John Favreau. I keep Jungle forgetting. Book. Do we do out of five or out of ten? I think we've done. I, I'm doing it out of ten. We're like doing I said out last of, week. We'll I said stick one is the then. one is nothing. Five is the middle ground. That's an average movie. Ten is the best thing. You've I seen. I give it a seven. A seven out of ten. I I can't. I, that's that's great that you say that because I was thinking about this in the car. I also give it a seven out of ten. All I right. think it's very above average. Uh, it's not. You know, I mean, it's one of those, it, it's it's one of those things where it's it's it, it was made so well and respected for it, but it's just not something I would generally go toward. And that shouldn't really hurt or go toward a score, but it it I can't help it. It, it does. So, I mean. Um, uh, but there, there, there were there were a couple of little, little logistical uh, problems like I talked about with a little bit there. But uh, man, yeah, seven out of ten. It's a very, very, very above average movie. Very, it's a good movie. I keep saying above average. And it sounds like it's horrible. It's a very, very good movie. And uh, if you're interested at all, if you have young children or if you're just a fan of the original, go see it. Go see it whenever you can because it really is. Um, it's, a, it's really a good experience. It's a fantastic experience. Like I said, we didn't see it in 3D like we talked about last week because um, it just doesn't seem worthy or, or worth it. But um, maybe if you see it in 3D, maybe it'll enhance, enhance it even more for you. Anyways, Jungle Book is a winner. Two thumbs up from us. So.